The program usually presented at this time will not be seen today so that we may bring you the following special program. They took off 30 minutes ago, a 747 airplane, and clamped onto its back America's first space shuttle, the Enterprise. They lifted off from a strip in the Mojave Desert, climbing into the morning air to make a bit of history today. At this moment, from a live camera in a chase plane, here they are, about 23,000 feet now. In a few minutes, the plane will release the spacecraft, and with its two astronauts on board, the Enterprise will get its first free flight test. We'll see it all. NBC News Enterprise reports the, the flight of, of the Enterprise. And the wind's now this special the NBC News report is brought to you by Polaroid's SX-70, the finest instant camera in the world. Good morning. Eight years ago, when Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon, the restless American spirit began asking the question, what next? Well, this morning, we start to get the answer. Having, quote, conquered space, albeit minimally, the next thing to do is to begin to use it. And that's what the space shuttle program is for, and that is its promise. Well, at this moment, here we are, the space shuttle on board its 747, clamped on top like a remora to a shark, about 23,000 feet, and it is about 13 minutes now from separation. Now, again, in this first test, the space shuttle will not be going into space. It won't do that for about a year and a half. But today, it will be released. It will glide, powerless but controlled, maneuvered by astronauts Fred Hayes and Gordon Fullerton to a landing about five minutes later. It is its first free flight test, a very important test, space officials say. They say that years from now, we will look back on what happens in this half hour as one more milestone of the space age. Well, if that's the case, we figured that it will not have any more meaning for anyone than for the youth of this country. And so instead of filling our studio this morning with NASA officials or former astronauts, we've invited a small group of high school science students to join us to watch this and hear it. Good morning, folks. How are you? We're going to go right now and join Roy Neal, NBC News correspondent who has covered everything in aerospace for America since our aerospace program began. He's at Edwards now, and good morning, Roy. Good morning, Jack. It's beautiful, warm, clear morning here at Edwards. And here on the ground, there's a huge crowd that's assembled because of this important flight. I must tell you, though, here at ground level, we don't see very much. I'm looking up there right now, and way off in the distance, I can see some small objects that are, of course, the 747 with the Enterprise on top and a number of chase planes. But uh, the better way to watch it is right here on television, as all of us have been doing this morning. One point I would like to make, though, that is that the piggyback concept, this carrying of the Enterprise aboard a 747, is not a new concept. Back in the days of World War I, the British experimented with a small scout fighter atop a seaplane. And in 1938, a British flying boat carried a smaller seaplane on a pylon, and they separated for successful flights. During World War II, the Germans loaded unmanned fighter planes with high explosives and mounted them atop Messerschmitt bombers and separated over the target. Now, it's a 747 jet carrying a space machine. <clears throat> this same plane will be used to ferry shuttles from California to a launch site at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. From there, beginning in 1979, the shuttles will be launched by rockets to fly orbital trials. They will ride attached to a huge tank of fuel for the main engines, and two more solid rockets will be strapped on the sides. In flight, the strap-ons will be dropped at an altitude of about 30 miles and returned by parachute for recovery. The main engines will complete the job of putting the shuttle into orbit. Then the fuel tank will be left behind, leaving the shuttle free to go about its business. Shuttles will remain in space for up to a month. They're designed to place satellites in orbit, repair existing satellites, even carry scientists, men and women, in a space laboratory. Perhaps most exciting, Space Shuttle makes possible the building of orbiting space stations. Space planners envision solar power stations beaming electricity back to Earth 
and factories turning out products that can be manufactured more efficiently in space than on Earth. Present plans call for five of these machines, each capable of flying at least a hundred missions. After each flight, the orbiter will be refurbished and ready to fly again within two weeks after landing. NASA envisioned 60 flights a year in the 1980s and is now offering special discounts, charters, and standby fares for passengers and cargo. To get back from space, the shuttle will burn its engines to slow down. It will return through the atmosphere, heat shield forward, much like the old Apollo spacecraft, heat up to 2,700 degrees from friction with the air as it slows down. And finally, the shuttle will nose down to fly like an airplane coming in for a landing. The first five orbital flights will be launched from Florida, and they will land here at the same dry lake bed in California, where we hope to see the Enterprise touch down in just a few minutes. 